All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be an overview and a little bit of background and also a look at, at my examples from the 2020 run of the number 35 pattern from Great Eastern Cutlery and specifically the beer and sausage bar tool knife version. Um, so if you are one of my viewers who like to see the knife right away, um, I am not going to show the knives immediately. I'm going to first talk about some of the background, but you know, this can be a little bit of a teaser and uh, feel free to skip ahead. But I think that this background information is really interesting and kind of one of the things that I enjoy about doing these videos is giving that um, information other than just literally showing the knife. Uh, so to start off, the number 35 pattern is one that GEC has done once before in 2017. And this is the normal version that was done, which was called the Churchill. And as you can see, it's a pen style knife. So the main blade on one end, uh, secondary on the other with a clip point and a sheep foot. And it was made in 2017, as you can see, it's the number 351217. 35 pattern, uh, clip point main blade, two blades, made in 2017. And they did also make a, another version of the 35, which was called the Drover, which had a spear point main blade and an all secondary. I don't have one of those, so I'm just showing this one off. But um, it, it came about that they were going to be making, again, this beer and sausage knife. And uh, kind of in the process, um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, some people really like this, some people really don't. But like I said, I'm going to give a little bit of the background on this knife. So some of this information, or a lot of it, is coming from a GEC, GEC employee named Randy Bell. Um, and then also a little bit is from talking to Bill Howard, the uh, owner of GEC, at the um, uh, bootleg or non debut 2020, which was a non-official uh, gathering of um, GEC enthusiasts and um, some GEC employees on the day that the uh, GEC rendezvous would have been if it hadn't been canceled for COVID. Um, so first of all, right before uh, the whole pandemic, it was planned that the GEC was going to be making a Marin Grosh uh, on the 35 pattern, but that it was going to have um, half stops. And as you can see, this 2017 version didn't. So uh, they weren't making enough of the knife to make a die for the, for the new shape of the blade, uh, shape of the tang. So they were gonna water jet those. Um, but in the process, they decided that they were going to make a cattle knife version of the 35. And uh, two things that people have requested quite a bit from GEC are mainly a scout knife on this pattern. So um, a blade, usually a secondary, a, uh, an awl, and a bottle opener, can opener. That would be super cool. But the second thing is a lot of people have asked for a stockman or cattle knife specifically uh, on this pattern. And that is actually what they made dies for. They were going to make a um, GEC cattle knife uh, being that, you know, it was going to have a sheep, uh, sheep foot secondary, a spade blade secondary, which is what they made the die for, and then um, the clip point main blade, or I'm sorry, uh, I believe a spear point main blade. And um, then the pandemic hit and they had to shut down. It was required by the state of Pennsylvania. And in that process, uh, again, Randy Bell kind of floated the idea on social media and um, also apparently to Bill Howard of the beer boat, which would have been a number 16, uh, I think that it was called the little Indian girl, but it was a mini canoe, um, but with a cap lifter instead of a, a pen blade for a secondary. And I guess Bill's response was that he was thinking of putting a cap lifter on the 35. Uh, and he wanted it to have a spatula like a doctor's knife, which in itself is kind of a strange and interesting um, take on this pattern because as far as I know, doctor's knives, uh, or at least recently, have not been traditionally a um, equal end cigar, which is what the, the pattern of the 35 is. It's an equal end cigar shaped pattern. 
Uh, and then in the process, they were going to add a wire stripper to the spatula slash cap lifter. And then Bill asked for the spatula be, t be changed to a fork. Um, so that was a pretty big leap going from a doctor's style knife to, um, I'm not sure, you know, I don't know if he knew what, what they were going to be making at that point, but then, um, later he asked Randy Bell, uh, and Randy Bell is, is one of the engineers or the engineer at GEC to make a comb for the 35, the upcoming 35 out of the spring steel that was used for the lock on the number 23 liner locks uh, and specifically for the teeth of the comb to fit together so that they can you know get more use they can get two combs you know per length or whatever of spring steel uh, which is kind of in itself an engineering you know task undertaking uh, so that's where you know this knife came about kind of an interesting progressive uh, move from being a cattle knife, which honestly, I would have really liked to have seen a cattle knife on this pattern. Um, I think what what we actually got is super cool, but I think a cattle knife would have been really, really cool also. I really enjoy cattle knives. Um, but to this kind of really strange beer and sausage knife. And uh, one other thing is that Bill had the idea of the, the comb being called a beard refuse removal tool. And um, at the, the rendezvous or the bootleg 2020, I did ask Bill uh, where his, you know, where the inspiration for the beard refuse removal tool came from. Uh, but I, you know, kind of stupidly got caught up talking about different knives and everything and forgot to ask it until literally right when everyone was leaving. And he said, you know, send an email or give us a call. Um, and I haven't been able to, you know, get in contact to get that answer. If I do, I'll probably post an update, but I'd love to know what the actual inspiration for that name Beard Refuse Removal Tool is. Uh, speaking of showing these off, these are stickers that are based on the illustrations done in-house at GEC uh, that were done with permission um, by Austin at C. Reisner Cut Cutlery Traditional Pocket Knives. Um, and they're super cool. I think they're a really good thing to go with the knives themselves and they fit in with the whole theme. So I'll just leave these in the corner over here and let's finally get to the knives. So the first thing a lot of people notice is that it's a really cool tube. It has this kind of uh, flannel or whatever this is called. I guess flannel is the material, but this pattern um, and says bar tool knife, beer and sausage, again, has that same design and that you're seeing on the stickers. The first version was in natural canvas micarta. And one thing, I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to get these tubes open. For whatever reason, these tubes, uh, have all felt more like hard to get open than normal. Um, they come with a pin. So there's the pin and you can see a little bit of a, uh, preview of the next um, pins that it is the color of the handle material. So we'll open up the knife and that's the natural canvas micarta. And so first of all, it's a good looking knife. It has brushed bolsters, uh, this stamped shield with beer and sausage looks really well done and another thing i noticed right away was that this natural micarta is a little bit rougher than gec's has been on other knives i've had and i think it's actually nice it, it gives it a little bit more texture um, but really no gaps at all really nicely done there and it is a three spring knife um, so we'll open them up from front to back here this is the fork and bottle opener I uh, haven't tried either, if I'm being honest. This isn't necessarily a an in-use review because I got these knives, you know, to be part of the collection. They're just really weird, and I already have the Churchill version of the 35 to use. Um, but this is the fork and bottle opener. I'm sure that it would work well. It looks like it would work really well, and other bottle openers on GEC knives that I've had have worked well. Uh, the fork has, you know, some pokiness to it. I think you could probably use it on sausage. And nice snap, 
Moving on to the blade, it's a very, very nice traditional uh, spear point with uh, an etch that I like, just nice and simple, uh, B and S. Uh, and I, I think that it's well done. Um, kind of, I think, a reference to the Beer Scout knife etch, which you'll see later. Um, but just a really classic, nice looking uh, spear point. And as you can see, really nice action on that. Not a strong pull. I would say that the fork is maybe a five and the, the main blade is maybe like a four. Um, so lighter pull, but nice action. And then let's get to, you know, kind of the, the main attraction here, or the, the main um, oddity, which is the beard refuse removal tool. And as you can see, the etch is a little bit off center on mine, not super, super dark, but you know, that's how it came. And mine snaps open and closed. Interestingly, it has this, I forget the exact name of it, but it's a rolling kind of half stop. So there is a part that, that has, you know, it's been cut out or, or grind it, ground so that it's lower, so that it does kind of have a, a catch here, but it's not a hard half stop like on, you know, the blades. Uh, it's kind of, like I say, a rolling half stop, and it's a very light pull on this. This is more like a three. Um, but as you can see, it does snap closed and open on its own. And honestly, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's a it's a comb, so it's not going to really like be a huge deal if it starts to close. Um, but I did just once run this through my beard. And uh, funny story, I actually, for, for kind of no reason, but also because um, I, I came into a very old Shatton Morgan razor um, from my, my wife's grandfather during the quarantine, I, I shaved, which I haven't, and at least consistently in a long time. And then I ended up, I grew my beard back. Um, I, I like to say, because I needed, I wanted to be able to use this on it, but uh, really just kind of get back to the norm. But I like to say that I did it so that I could use the BRR tool. But anyway, I did try it and, it, you know, I think it would work as a beard comb. I don't really use a beard comb, but I think it, it could do some beard combing. It looks to me a lot like a dog comb. Um, there are historic precedent of dog grooming knives. Um, I will put a picture of one right up here, a modern one uh, from Rough Rider. And it does look a little bit more like that to me than a normal person comb. But we'll set that right there and move on to the next version, which was the Gabin Ebony. And again, the tube was kind of hard to open on this, but you'll see that the outside of the pin, again, is colored like the knife, if you've seen uh, Gabin Ebony before. And we'll open it up. And same deal, nicely done on the stamp. Um, the pulls are really similar and same pretty much on the snap. Now this one, not the greatest etch on the BRR tool again. Um, kind of interesting to see that a uh, little off center, but it is a kind of tight spot that they're fitting it into. Um, now, one thing on these is that I noticed that this uh, Gavin Ebony, Ebony version has more of a satin maybe, or even polished and, and less of the brushed finish that the Micarta had. Um, so a little bit flashier looking. I think that Gabin Ebony really looks nice on any traditional, uh, any classic type traditional. Um, this is nice and dark ebony. This is not a crack. It's just character of the wood. Um, and I like this. I think it's a very, very good look. I, again, I think ebony looks good on pretty much any traditional. So there's that one. And then the last is the autumn leaf jig bone. And same deal, 
pin color to the handle. And I was really, really happily surprised with this bone. I think that it looks even better than in the pictures that GDC has posted. Uh, it's got a really nice, deep kind of almost red caramel color that I think looks better than some of the bone that GEC has called autumn, uh, what is it, autumn leaf jig bone. So maybe the leaf is why it has, you know, or is, kind of designates that it's a little bit more red um, than some autumn jig bone. But uh, really, really happy with the color of this bone and honestly the jigging too. I, I don't love jigged bone as much as a lot of traditional knife enthusiasts do. Uh, but I, I think that this is really nicely done jigging and nice pull, uh, pretty much the same on the pull and snap, but this one came with a better etch. You can see that that's quite a bit clearer. I'm um, still a little off center, but quite a bit clearer. So I was, I was happy with that. And I don't really think that it's because of the difference in, in where I got these at all that that is the case. But um, I did get these two from Collector Knives and this one from Blue Creek Cutlery. Uh, so I've gotten great service from, from both of them, obviously, before I've talked about them before. And um, unfortunately, at this point, it's going to be tough to get this. I might post this video before they go up on uh, traditional pocket knives but I believe most of the retailers are sold out of them already. Um, but same deal, really nice. And um, it is a weird knife. A lot of people, like I said, are divided on this knife. Um, a lot of people really think that it's a bad knife to make, that it's you know not traditional, it's novelty, it's gimmicky. And then a lot of people just think it's really cool and unique. And I, I definitely fall more towards the cool and unique. That's one of the things that I've always liked about GEC is that they're willing to do those unexpected things as kind of quirky choices with knives. And I think this is a very extreme example of it. And I can see some people, you know, point that, that it's a little bit farther than GEC has gone with that before. Um, but one thing about that is that they have done, you know, knives that are intentionally kind of gimmicky. Um, so very popular example is the beer scout knife so the beer scout brand or brand or you know whatever you want to call it series which is really it was only one run and they won't make them again because the boy scouts didn't didn't appreciate it i guess um but the beer scout it was definitely i think intentionally gimmicky i mean be responsible works both for beer and for knives obviously it has this beer scout knife club and then it's beer barrel oak and this one's actually packed up pretty uh, nicely here. It They even made uh, pint glasses to go with them. And just like I had said about the um, beer and sausage knives, it had this BNS edge or BS edge, which I think might have been one of the things that the Boy Scouts didn't love. Um, but it, you know, definitely a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, and these are super popular. I mean, uh, I wish I had gotten more of these when they came out. Um, I, I, at that time, maybe leaned a little bit more towards the thinking it was gimmicky. Uh, and I wish at that time that I hadn't leaned that way and that I'd gotten more of them because, um, they are very cool. I wish that I had a user. This is not a user. Um, but I only have this one. They're very cool and they're very, very highly sought after now. So um, I do lean towards the, the appreciating the cool and uniqueness side of that spectrum now uh, on this run of knives. And the gimmickiness is definitely something that GEC has done before. Um, speaking of, I wanted to show also how these uh, blades do fit together. So although it's gimmicky, it, it's kind of a cool engineering thing that these combs fit together so that they could, you know, get two of them out of each kind of length of steel, uh, as I had mentioned earlier. And I also wanted to show the Marin Grosh 35 that was done on this run uh, to give a little bit of a contrast. 
So first of all, they don't come in a tube. I do have a video on all, all of these Marin Grosh knives, so check that out. Um, but they don't come in a tube, they come in a more traditional type box with a bag. But the main thing is that they really focus in on making the knives as close to the classic or the original as possible. And they do that in part by basing the knives on an actual knife from a Marin Grosh catalog. Um, so this is the number 35 pattern from GEC, but it's the number 120 for Marin Grosh, and they call it the Trapper. Uh, but you'll see the difference right away in that this looks much more traditional than the beer scout or I'm sorry, the beer and sausage knives has a traditional shield. You know, they're all very traditional handle materials. They did uh, Appaloosa bone um, and autumn jig type bone, a Cocobolo or Cocobolo and uh, ebony. And it even has the same etch as the knife or close to the same etch or inspired by as the knife on the catalog. So very different approaches to the same pattern, a very traditional approach and a very uh, quirky or unique approach. So it, I think it's interesting to see those two sides on the same pattern in the same run. Um, but again, overall, I enjoy these knives. I think that they are in large part a novelty. Um, I, I don't see a whole lot of concurrent use of a fork and a comb. Um, maybe if you're getting a lot of sausage in your beard, I don't know, but I think it is in large part, you know, to have a fun kind of interesting knife. And they're already very, you know, sought after a lot more people wanted them than could get them. Uh, so I'm happy to have gotten them. Uh, like I say, I wish I would have done this on the Beer Scout. And if you can find one for a reasonable price, I think that it's a great example of one of the things that makes GEC so great. So if you've enjoyed this video, uh, check out my other videos. I've got lots on knives like this, other GECs and traditionals, as well as some moderns and fixed blades. Um, also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notified when I post new videos if you want to see more videos like this and check out my social media all at Knife Thoughts, uh, my website knifethoughts.com where I post articles on knives like this and knife topics and as always don't forget to go out and do good.